Good afternoon, everybody and anybody who might type in and see this later. It is a Spark Sites Office Hours edition. Ask us anything, but we have a special edition today. And that special edition is the SEO edition. It seems like we made ourselves available last week or two weeks ago. Two yeah. Weeks ago. Two weeks. It feels like it was literally yesterday. It does. Um, <laughs> but it feels like all the all the questions we got that day uh, were actually centered around SEO. And the more we answered questions on SEO, it seemed like the more questions we got. So we decided to, A, make ourselves available for office hours today. So if you're piping in from Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, wherever, Feel free to click the link. Um, there's a link where if you actually want to join us on the stage here, click the link. It'll prompt you to uh, to sign in. And then if I see you pipe in in the waiting room, I'll bring you in with your questions. Or if you just want to ask your question real quick, post it in the comments and we'll get your SEO questions answered. But why is this coming up? Amber, why is this coming up even beyond the episode we had last week? What have you seen? I think it's just this time of year that people are thinking about their website. Like we're going into the holidays and people are marketing a lot. I think they're actively thinking about marketing a lot. And yeah. so I just think SEO kind of goes hand in hand with that. And people want to make sure, A, that their site is, you know, search engine optimized already. And B, how can they make their SEO better? Um so yeah, I think it's the time of year and people are getting really serious about marketing their businesses and they want to make sure that their SEO is the kind of like that first step of getting their web presence out there and cleaned up. Cleaned up. Yeah. Do, do you know why? Do you know <laughs> what <laughs> SEO does? It tells Google what to search for. <laughs> uh, you know, what's funny is, is like a lot of our businesses, uh, we have right now 185 uh, active clients under mm -hmm. management, and that's always kind of increasing, decreasing. We manage about 240 sites and um, all of them get phone calls all the time from telemarketers. Mm -hmm. And Amber, you fortunately don't have to man the phone, so you never get these phone calls in our phone service, Grasshopper. But we get so many phone calls. People don't even check to see if we're a web design company. They're just like, let's call and let's tell them, your website doesn't rank on Google. We'll do SEO. And they charge two grand a month and you don't know what you're getting. Mm -hmm. And so SEO stands for search engine optimization for those who don't know. And um, search engine optimization uh, is basically optimizing your page, not your website, because Google has said explicitly, fun fact, Google does not rank websites. It ranks web pages. Yeah. And that accumulation of web pages basically. Oh, here, Tristan actually has a really good answer to this. That is a good answer. SEO. Tristan says SEO is digital equity, building credibility based on time with the same domain name and search result. That's that's great. Yeah. But, uh, several things here that Tristan's talking about is this. When we redesign a website, uh, I'm pointing at my mic. We're over here where he says based on time. I don't know if you know this, Amber, but when we redesign someone's website and we move their website, even if we don't redesign it, let's just say we update it, but we move it to our servers. Mm -hmm. When you change that IP address, you actually interrupt the time value. So on SEO, time is very important. Now, yeah. when you keep all the same content but move IP addresses, it's not so bad. It gets re-ranked pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, but if we built a brand new website, got rid of all the blogs, and got rid of the IP address, got a new IP address, their SEO starts zero. Yeah. Starts from zero. Um, now, though, I like this phrase, digital equity. What do you think Tristan means by that? I'm not sure what I think that. Well, is. what's equity? I mean, just in your house, money. what's equity? Money. Money, a value, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So perceived value. And so like, just like a property, you buy your property now, even if the market goes up and down, given 10 years, you're going to have some kind of equity. Yeah. Uh, the same 
in the digital space. This is great, Tristan, digital equity. And so the longer, like our website company, Sparksite, has been in business like, geez, nine years. Beautiful. And the SEO on our blogs has been there for at least seven of those years. Mm -hmm. And longevity matters. Now, the other thing too, though, is I do need to freshen up this blog post because there is a half-life. So the Google algorithm has over 500 different reference points. And it updates itself almost at minimum twice a day. So much so that there is not a single so a Google engineer that actually knows how the Google algorithm work. But they know that they can inject priority and weight to the latest factors that they're adding. So they might suddenly realize, well, longevity really matters. And so they basically turn up the volume, if you will, mm -hmm. on how important that is. Or maybe they actually want to see fresh content. So you might have longevity, but if you haven't posted anything in two years, that's a problem. Um, but credibility. Why do you think being on the web for a long time with blog posts gives credibility to your brain? What do you think? Just builds trust. So people know that you're a professional when you can speak to different topics revolving around whatever your business is. Um, it just shows that you are someone who knows what they're doing. So I think that's the biggest thing. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly it. I mean, when you drive by, a restaurant and you've driven by that restaurant and it's always had people outside mm -hmm. and the lights are always on and yeah. they're always communicating to the public. I mean, it's credible that eh, that might be a good place to go have lunch. Yeah. It's the same with content. You know, yeah. that one blog post always comes up and I might not have even ever clicked it, but they've been around for a long time and yeah. I keep seeing their content and I see a large volume of content. So they really must care about yeah. this topic yeah uh okay tristan yeah tristan's comment is here actually tristan says you're my third like how are we not direct contacts that's weird oh that's odd i was just looking at our linkedin connections and it showed that we were like third tier connections but i know that we're first tier connection tristan tristan comes on the crypto show quite a bit so if you're just bopping in, please feel free to ask your questions, post any questions about SEO that you have. We're here to tackle them. Um, but until then, what are some of our myths? Ooh, this is my favorite. I love talking about SEO myths. Um, <laughs> that it's a one-time thing. Th that you just do it once and that's it. That is probably my favorite myth. Why is that your <laughs> Because it's crazy. <laughs> what do you mean it's crazy? Well, because I feel like you should expect that because your business is ever evolving, your yeah. SEO is going to evolve as well. You know, you yeah. might focus, you might even change your business plan from where you started a few years in. You might have different things that you, that are focal points just as you grow and change. And so I think that you should expect the same thing from your web presence and your SEO is that mm. it would change along with your business. It's just yeah. another piece of that puzzle. Yeah. Well, I mean, and really, and for those who don't know, you know, I wonder if I can just share my screen. Let me, let's see here. Let's actually do, oh, let's do this. Let's see if we can do this and if it doesn't slow my computer down. There. Oh. So Amber and I are sharing with you something that we created called the SEO checklist. And we've made this available to our clients or actually to anyone for download on our website. Um, and then Tristan's got a comment here, which I'll post in a second. But this is from the myths page that SEO is a one-time thing. And I think, Amber, I think why we wrote this myth down and why we tr consistently try to debunk this myth is that website owners, business owners, especially small business owners, mm -hmm. okay? Like small, medium-sized service-based companies. They do not want to mess with this. It's like they, they picture all the things they got to do in their company mm -hmm. and they think they're going to set up their SEO and it's going to be done. And you can do some things initially yeah. to get ranked. But if you think SEO is one and done, it, it tells the search engine two things. Number one, you don't care about this that much. And or number two, you don't know about this. 
yeah. that much. That's fair. Because if you can't, if you're not staying up to date on the content, you're not going to write blogs. You're not going to post, you know, stories on social media. You're not going to post on your Google businesses and because eh, you don't really know what to say. Mm -hmm. Well, don't you at minimum know the business that you're in? Right. And Google uses this as like how fresh and how frequently are you posting? Google uses this as a signal as to whether or not you're actually a qualified person to put in front of people searching for this topic. Mm -hmm. And so yeah. I put this in here because people, small business owners especially, think they can want it done and, uh, and just be done with SEO. It's just not the case. Let's look at Tristan's question real quick or statement. The more backlinks you have, the better, as opposed to authorized backlinks, quality over quantity, authorized backlinks. Now, I think I know what you're saying here with authorized backlinks, but I think we've used a different term for it. Tristan, what do you mean by authorized? Uh, because it, it's, a, it's a funny word that we've used in the industry because backlinks as organic backlinks are good, but for the public, what do you think you mean by authorized backlinks? I think uh, you're talking about sponsored backlinks. Like I go and make a deal with a company, we exchange backlinks, and it's kind of more of a sponsorship or a promo. But you might have a different definition. Amber, do you know anything about backlinks? Not particularly, no. It's basically links yeah. back to your site. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, Google really loves organic backlinks. If we post, for example, if we post the SEO checklist mm -hmm. and everyone loves it and someone goes, oh, I got a lot out of this and posts it on Facebook and links to the PDF or links to the download page, Google sees that link when it, when it crawls Facebook and when it crawls that page on Facebook and it earmarks that mm -hmm. as a backlink. So this is also why we say it regarding backlinks, folks. This is also why we say you should update your social media profiles in extreme detail because it, again, it doesn't count for a lot. Like if you have a social media profile on LinkedIn and I link to spark sites on LinkedIn, that does count as a backlink. Is it a heavily weighted backlink? No, it's different mm. than if it were on the first page of CNN. CNN sure. does an article and says the world's greatest SEO checklist <laughs> posted. <laughs> let's let's bump DeSantis winning Florida and let's put this article about SEO. <laughs> uh, checklist. One can dream, right? Yeah, that's On the dream. The front page of CNN, <laughs> then they will definitely. Man, Tristan coming in hot. Tristan, is this what you do? Do you do SEO, Tristan? Do I need to know this about you? <laughs> SEO? Yeah. Do you want to come this... in here with us? Yeah, you're welcome to actually, if you click the link and you have time and you're not clicking other things because you're working, Tristan, you're welcome to actually click that link and you will join my waiting list and I'll bring you in and we could just talk about SEO. Uh, he also says this, coupling with large traffic websites to rank to help you rank higher, exactly, Grant. Okay, so yes, he was talking about authorized and we were on the same page there. So this is a great SEO tactic. So often you might see Kara Dennison is great for this or was doing great for this for a while. She was a Forbes author. Mm. Now, Forbes has a ton of these, right? Like it yeah. has a ton of contributing authors. I mean, hundreds, if not yeah. thousands. The hope, is that your article takes off mm -hmm. and then that byline is floating around at a, at a higher page in the site hierarchy. And in Kara's case, she had a few uh, articles take off and getting too laggy, Amber, just let me know. Um, but, uh, but Kara, uh, she's under OptimizeCareerSolutions.com. Kara Dennison, we're big fans. She's one of our favorite clients to work with. When she gets this Forbes article up and running and her byline is there, if that can move up in the page hierarchy, that backlink does really good and it's a large traffic website. I mentioned Facebook. I mean, Google crawls Facebook constantly. Mm -hmm. They might give a, a crawl budget to our website of maybe so many seconds, if you will, of the day of being crawled, which means it'll only crawl a handful of our, web, uh, our websites. The more backlinks you have, 
the more they allocate a crawl budget. Mm -hmm. And so, of course, Facebook has so many links going in and out of it. And it's like the social media website and other uh, social media websites do as well. I think TikTok even announced a partnership with Google to make their video mm -hmm. meta descriptions crawlable. And so, of course, they're going to rise up and ranking get a higher uh, crawl budget. So, yes, coupling website and then Tristan also dropping bombs. We should just write an ebook with Tristan. I mean, I've got my ebook. We could we could do a spinoff course here. Let's bring ours up. Ours up up here and it's available for download. We cover the SEO basics, stuff that has to be done consistently, stuff that we don't want and done. Um, but we're really just focused on the myths right now. But Tristan coming in hot, the most common digital marketer pitch I've heard for SEO is we're gonna add thousands of backlinks to increase rankings, not ineffective, but more isn't always better. And he's right. Which client did we have that was that went with web.com for a while? Do you recall? Mm -mm. You know, I think it was Nick Van Nice of Results Driven Coaching. Results Driven Coaching, that's his website, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, re yeah, results. So I think he paid uh, web.com for a while. And he actually said, I got a ton of traffic, Grant. It worked. I got no leads. Yeah. And this is where Tristan's talking about that. It's not just more traffic. You can have an SEO marketer come in. And, and I don't know if you know this, that they do this, Amber. We might have talked about this. Let's say you're a, your dog. <laughs> My horse. A, your horse. Your horse dog. <laughs> Back there. <laughs> um. These companies will, will own web real estate. Like say for example, a landscaping company. Mm -hmm. They'll have a landscaping website that they have search engine optimized and search engine optimized. And someone's job is to con continually curate backlinks and traffic and make it this highly informational website. Then they'll call landscaping companies and lease out this site to these landscaping companies for two or three grand a month and generate traffic and maybe even generate leads. And it could work several ways. They could just run the form and run the form submissions. Hey, get a free quote to the client. Or they could just take the ad blocks and put that landscaping company's ad on the ad blocks throughout that landscaping website. Mm -hmm. And then they're suddenly getting thousands of hits. And their, their ranking pops, but their website itself didn't really improve. Yeah, And it's not always the case, but this is, I think, what Tristan's getting at, that at times, uh, quantity sounds here. Let me get rid of this. Quantity sounds like it's really good, and you might be able to pay a couple grand a month and get that traffic up. But is yeah. your page optimized? Is this going to convert? You know, I think Avanza is in the middle. One of our clients, Avanza, dot, Avanza no, Avanza, Avanza Life, Insurance. Avanza Insurance dot com. Mm -hmm. I think they're paying for some banner ads coming up soon. And they've done this in the past. And you have to make sure you're getting with someone who's not only driving traffic, but driving quality traffic. Yeah. Well, because what's the point of driving all that traffic to your website if it doesn't do anything for your business? The reason you're trying to drive that traffic is to increase your business or be, to be more visible. And yeah. if it doesn't convert, then, yeah. you know. Well, we had this conversation and you weren't on the call with one of our other clients, BHI Services. BHI, they do um, the commercial property management for a ton of banks and a ton of companies. They're, they're a high-end commercial property maintenance company. And they were coming to us and they were talking about spending a budget. I won't go into their details, but spending a healthy, healthy budget on SEO. And I got to thinking and I said, What's the psychographic profile of decision maker? And the decision maker does not Google their services. They go to expos and they ask their friends. If they have a roof that was blown off because of a hurricane, they'll call and say, hey, what roof guy do you use? They'll call their other peers. And so I said, you could spend this very healthy budget on SEO and we could get something going. But what if you spent a fraction of that budget taking your target audience out to steak dinners. You know who they are. They're local. Yeah. They're geographic in nature. True. They're local in nature. And you'd spend an initial budget 
uh, taking them to dinner and then you'd spend a healthier budget like following up with them or sending them a, a piece of what we call a swag bomb. Now, after we did some diagnosis, we did find a way that we could use SEO to really benefit them because SEO isn't just about ranking and getting a cold lead. Sometimes you can go to an expo and make sure that you rank for certain terms so that when they Google you, it's confirmation. Mm -hmm. So SEO isn't one dimensional, but my point is, is like you said, what's the point of driving this traffic? That question is actually a goal question. Mm -hmm. What's your goal? You know, yeah. what are you trying to do? So let's see here. Yeah. What are you trying to do with your budget? And is this the best use? Yes, I could sell you SEO services, but is that actually the best use of your budget? Maybe a radical landing page and a really good welcome video mm -hmm. is actually the way to go. It just depends on your target audience. So let's see what Tristan says here. Lastly, negative Ben in a few interesting rooms, though, most but negative Ben in a few interesting and when there is some oh maybe he doesn't maybe he doesn't do SEO <laughs> I think that's yeah maybe he's like ne if I don't do SEO but I've been <laughs> in a few interesting rooms though and when there's something I know nothing about I always absorb as much information nice. as possible I have mad respect for this mm -hmm. there was a great quote I heard lately actually and it was a samurai quote do I have it I think I have it right here hang on I've got it right here and it's it's exactly what Tristan is saying the samurai quote says this is it right here. I read this in my meditations. One should be wary of talking on forever about subjects as learning morality and folklore in front of elders or other people of rank who know what they're talking about. It's disagreeable to listen to someone who doesn't know what they're talking about. And this was written in the 1600s. That's amazing. To other samurai. And they're like, you're doing this shit. <laughs> okay. Be in the room and listen. As yeah. Tristan is saying, uh, and I think it's important, especially Tristan, I don't know if you own a business or if you manage a business. I think your profile says owner operator. So you do own a business. And when you own a business, you only have so much marketing budget. Yeah. Amber, fun, fun question. Do you know the rough rule of thumb formula for how healthy your marketing budget should be? Ooh, no, but I would love to know. <laughs> so education point. For those who don't know, the rule of thumb in general is whatever you want your revenue next year to be, you should be spending between 11 and 13% of that number this year on marketing. And so if you plan on making a hundred grand or a million dollars for round numbers or $10 million for round numbers, excuse me, let's just say 10 million. I'm sorry, let's just say a million. Then you should be spending between 110 and $130,000 this year. Wow. On marketing so that the fruit bears out next year. Now that's an intense number. Mm -hmm. And especially when the average small business owner has less than three employees, less than five employees in America. And I know that our viewership is kind of all over. But in America, the average small business owner makes less than 300000 a year, and they have less than five employees, usually less than three. And so you're talking about, what are we saying? What is that? It's, that's, uh, that's between 33000 and 36000 42000 42000 Between $33,000 and $42,000 this year, if next year you want to make three hundred k. That's a lot of money. And how are you going to spend that? Yeah. Well, an SEO company will take all of that. Mm -hmm. And is that the right play, man? I, I, it's not always the right play. I mean, building out a good, healthy website and knowing what your funnel looks like, building a healthy conversion, uh, like freemium products, having some yeah. decent videos, honestly, having a good content plan, first and foremost. Yeah. Now, you've done a lot of our content for a lot of our clients well, with our micro marketing service that we've had. Yeah. What has been one of the bigger challenges you've had about creating content? Well, for clients? specifically when we want to focus on a certain term that we want to rank for, we have to write a lot of content because it takes about, correct me if I'm wrong here, about 30 pieces of content to rank yeah. for 
um, I'm sorry, 30 pieces of content that are all different, not the same, um, to rank for a certain term. So just gathering the information, you know, we had um, <laughs> one client that we love is um, Meredith at Floor Restore. She's great. My and Floor so we, Restore. Yeah. yeah. So we, we were doing her micro marketing for a while. So we wrote a ton of content for her. And so it does get hard to try to stay interesting without repeating yourself a bunch of times. And th I think that's the hardest part. But with AI software, we've kind of found a sweet spot of being able to find content out there, use the AI to reword it. And then all yeah. we have to really do is write an opening and closing paragraph, which we yeah. learned how to do in the sixth grade. So it becomes <laughs> really simple. <laughs> and we forgot yeah. how to do as sure. soon as we left high school. Yeah. <laughs> and so it seems really daunting just trying to gather all that content and, and yeah. keep it interesting, keep it fresh. And because yeah. you don't want to put out a bunch of stuff that, you know, people aren't going to, um, you know, vibe with. So, yeah. so it is hard gathering the content. But with AI, it makes it so much easier. Um, yeah. Really, I think that's, that's the best way to go about it is just get it yeah. all, get all your content at once and then start scheduling it. Yeah, you dropped a few quick bombs and, and for those popping in and I want to give a few quick shout outs. So a quick shout out to Anton over on YouTube. Anton, blessings to you, man, for listening. And this is Amber too. Amber's invested a lot of time in content creation and in micro marketing. And she's my right hand gal for Spark Sites and all things Spark Sites. And we do, we try to provide a ton of content. So quick shout out to Anton. Thank you. And Anton, if you can think of anyone that can benefit from today's show, uh, uh share with them and make sure you like or subscribe and then irving thomas dude i have not seen irving thomas and he's linking people who might be able to benefit from today's show so big shout out to irving who is has been as long as i've been aware of irving very entrepreneurial and definitely uh definitely a hustler but i want to zero in on something you said um 30 pieces of content for those who don't know, um, if you've been around Spark Site, we call this the SEO base. And that 30 pieces of content, it is an arbitrary number. And that arbitrary number is taken largely from our experiments ourselves of what works to drive the, to actually move the needle on a term. Now, here's the deal. If you say, for example, you mow lawns and say, for example, you mow residential lawns. And say, for example, you also mow commercial lawns. That 30 posts, that those 30 posts are all about the residential lawn. Yeah. You, you're not going to rank for both with 30 posts. Mm -mm. And each post should be 80 plus percent search engine optimized. Thomas is still sharing to people, man. That's awesome. <laughs> Thanks, man. I really appreciate it. He's probably texting his crew being like, why don't I rank or whatever? <laughs> I don't know what Irving's up to these days. Um, so yeah, I mean, that SEO baseline, uh, baseline is critical. And fortunately with the web, we could start research and write about anything. Um, but being tactical. That's the thing. Yeah. You can, can write the case. Mm -hmm. about any topic if you wanted, but to make it have that impact that you want to get the mm -hmm. results that you want, you mm -hmm. have to be smart about it. And mm -hmm. that's just one way that baseline has been, you know, good for us in the past. And that's what we'd like to start with. So, yeah, man. Yeah. So if you're just bopping in and to Irving and to Anton, I appreciate you all. Please, if you have any SEO questions, that's what we're here for today. You know, we love charging money for SEO wisdom and SEO services, but today we're just making ourselves available. So if you have any questions, this is your opportunity to get that. As Anton said, that free info and free knowledge from us having done this for years. Now, for those who don't know, Amber's heard this story too many times. Back in 2004, me and a handful of friends spent 10K. Now, $10,000 in 2004 was different than $10,000 in 2022. Yeah. And we paid an ex-Googler to sit with us for a weekend and show us how to rank in the Google algorithm, which was relatively new at the time in terms of how to optimize for it. And SEO, they didn't even have terms like search engine optimization, SEO. 
or search engine marketer, SEM. We consider ourselves, or sometimes we wear the hat of SEM, that's search engine marketers. And he told us this Googler, ex-Googler, told us a bunch of little items and it was so helpful. But he did say this, he said, guys, this algorithm is gonna teach itself. People aren't gonna understand it entirely. Mm -hmm. But the thing that will always reign supreme, <laughs> the thing that will always, Je Jessica, Jessica's working in one room for us. Mm -hmm. And Jessica is a new trial team member. We're super pumped to have her. We she's her. been a fan of what we've been doing. We've been a fan of what she's been doing. I've interviewed her for her energy code work. If you ever want consultation on energy code work or farming, Jessica, talk to Jessica. And her husband, Miguel, is on a tear right now helping people with their mission statement and helping raise boys he's a great guy for that um she's in the other room working for us helping us stay organized and keeping our brain clear but then over there watching us on youtube and she's also That's learning look at and her she's also learning <laughs> and i don't know who hello user is is hello -y. is that like is a is that like noise you know awesome <laughs> But to, to end cap this story, we paid this Googler to teach us how to rank and they taught us a good handful of things. And though okay. many things about search and content ranking have changed, the one thing, the few things that have not changed and you're ready for knowledge drops, this is it. The few things that have not changed in the last, what is that? 18 years, no, 18 years. Yeah, yeah. Regularly posting. Doesn't have to be every day, but yeah. it should be at least once a week. Regularly mm -hmm. posting content that is centered around your search engine term. That has a that has the search engine term, the keyword phrase in the title, mm -hmm. that has the keyword phrase in the URL that appears, I think it's 1.2 times for every 100 words. Oh. Boom. Is it 1.2? Yeah. I think so. Yeah. Uh, so, so if you have a 300 word post, which is number six, it should at least be a 300 word post. Your word should appear two to three times, but no more than that. Yeah. There's a, there's a something that we used that used to, uh, <laughs> Amber might appreciate this. There used to be a, a black hat technique for this. We used to do this because it was the wild west. It was called keywords. It was called keyword stuffing. And you'd, you'd write out multiple variations of your keyword. And like long paragraphs. And it would just be almost like hashtags, but just like tons of words spaced out. Then you'd highlight that section. You'd make it the same color of the background. And you'd set the font size to one pixel each. <laughs> Amber, this page. <laughs> this page would be full of hundreds of keywords. And you would rank overnight. But That's Google incredible. got wise to it. Sure. And, and, <laughs> and so you could have, and, and like porn sites pioneered this, by the way. Oh porn. my God. Of porn course they did. Sites, <laughs> the game show oh connection, the Beardmore connection over the <laughs> bowling team. For those who don't know, the game show connection has been a client and one day we'll launch your <laughs> website. Eventually. <laughs> Eventually. Maybe. But they are the number one remote corporate team game show company in the nation and they've yeah. been doing this for decades right That's amazing yeah. yeah yeah fantastic so you got to check out paul beer more in the game show connection amber is the best ever but amber like we would do this and porn sites for those who don't know porn <laughs> sites are it's cutting like edge from a technology perspective and from a yeah. web tech perspective mm -hmm. they've pioneered a lot but in terms of seo they also found what works for SEO ranking, and you could have a web page that, and this happened, and I tell the story and people chuckle. Whitehouse.com used to be a porn site in the early days, like the very earliest of days, and search engine optimization was happening. Mm -hmm. So people would look up like President Clinton, and they bring out the uh, like the the computer console for the class. Class, we're going to browse internets today, and <laughs> they're like, let's check out our government. And they type in whitehouse.com and it was a porn site. And Google, Google answered this call very quickly mm -hmm. by figuring out black hat techniques like keyword stuffing and adjusting so that of the, of the items we just mentioned, 
your keyword phrase should never appear more than 1.2 times per hundred words. And if your post is about 300 words, that means your, your, your keyword's going to appear, I'm sorry, three to four times at most. Sure. One of those times should be in the title. One of those times should be in a subtitle. And then the other time should be in a natural organic paragraph. This is what this Googler told us back then. From our experimentation, this is true today. Yeah. And this has been going on and Google's algorithm will, can, and they told us this back then, Google's algorithm will learn, but how it will learn is, is this quality content or not? That's its question. Yeah. So as a business owner, if someone comes to you and says, I could give you a shortcut on content, your answer should always be no. Now, I don't mind paying you for quality content. Yeah. But taking shortcut content or high volumes of leads. So back up and people don't know this. You can get deranked. Uh, let's see here. Let me show you something. Here we go. Tristan's comment. And the example we gave where your site suddenly gets a bunch of backlink traffic not only the volume of traffic is an earmarker for the Google algorithm, but the source of those backlinks matters. And companies like web.com have been earmarked as spam providers. Mm -hmm. So if you suddenly have all this traffic, you might start ranking for your service. But if you cut that contract, you will rank lower than before you had the service. Yeah. So if you were ranked in the top, let's say you were ranked in the top 10, you might have appeared on page two or at the bottom of page one for a Google search for your term. And let's say because of the flood of traffic, you suddenly bump to position three. When they take those backlinks away because a different metric on the Google search algorithm is pace of loss of backlinks. Mm -hmm. If you suddenly lose 90% of your backlinks in a short period of time, Google's going to go, whoa, what's going on here? Yeah. And that doesn't necessarily correlate with the fact that you had spam content in the first place. Mm -hmm. so it could be damaging to your URL. So uh, let's see. Any other questions we got here? Let's go back to our myths. Yeah. Myths. What other myths you got, Amber? What other myths do we have? Um, let's see. High bounce rates are bad for your ranking. Oh, that's a good one. Yes. That's a good one. For those just jumping in, Amber is referring to the SEO checklist. And the first section of our SEO checklist is high bounce rates. Myth number four. The myth is that high bounce rates are bad for your ranking. Now you read this. Did you read this one? Mm -hmm. it's just Why is, uh, uh, oh, you said, no, you didn't read it? Uh, no, I just, yeah, I just grabbed oh. it. Do you know why this is a myth? Uh, um, what can you imagine would make this a myth? No clue. So what is a bounce rate? When someone comes to your website and then they leave. Correct. So a bounce rate is exactly that. Mm -hmm. And they're there for under a certain period of time. And they immediately click to a URL that's not your URL. Mm -hmm. So most marketers would be like, I looked at your website. Oh, did you? You just cold called me. <laughs> and they're going to be like, I looked at your website and we saw that you have a high bounce rate. It's like, well, that's interesting. How do you have that information? Yeah. And uh, that's the first question uh, because how you get that information is generally only through Google Analytics from an account that you control. But they say you have a high bounce rate and you suddenly panic and go, high sounds bad because they made it sound bad. And then the next thought is kind of logical. If someone hits my website, is there for less than a second and travels away, what could that mean? And the marketer will tell you, well, your website's not designed to convert and the quality of the leads are really poor and blah, blah, blah. A high bounce rate, what if your webpage was a landing page and you wanted them to book a phone call with you in the case of Paul Beermore with the Game Show Connection? Boom. Paul Beardmore with a game show connection. 
His number one call to action is for people to book a phone call with him. Mm -hmm. So he can advise them and do consultative sales and get encounter with that client. So what if they landed on the website and click the book, the booking link, and that booking link went to a Calendly link? Yeah, that's not necessarily bad. That's what you want them to do. But you want them to do. that Calendly link is probably not on your website. Yeah. External. So you do want to ask yourself, knowing your bounce rate is important. Mm -hmm. Knowing how your bounce rate changed last month to this month super important yeah but also knowing what it's referring to is far more important because mm -hmm. you might want a high bounce rate i want them to land on this page and click my 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 booking link asap yeah what what's a page that you want them to linger on can you give an example <clears throat> maybe their services page their services page exactly yeah. that i mean that's a great one Mm -hmm. or any page like any blog yeah i'd love for them to linger on my blog yeah now oftentimes if you as a business owner are finding yourself going no i want them to click my buy button or my contact button well time out yes we, that is the end result but don't you want more educated clients mm -hmm. we don't want every lead we get no in fact me me and the girls have articulated our core, our core client values, the type of client we want. Yeah. Boom. Paul jumps in. We, per, we always prefer a call, but realistically, a high percentage of our corporate event planners feel they're too busy for that and they prefer an email. So an email contact form. So in this case, yeah. the, an email contact form is most likely his own, mm -hmm. his own link. <clears throat> and so they do want low bounce rates. They might not spend a lot of time on, say, for example, the homepage, but they definitely, but Paul definitely wants them to spend time, you know, a few seconds, 30 seconds, a minute, two minutes on the contact page, because that will show that people are filling out that contact form mm -hmm. and emailing him from there. So yeah, that's a good, yeah. that's a good nuance to know. Well, and also you might have a call to action to email someone and it goes, you click it and it goes to your your inbox or wherever you check. So that bounce your rate. Gmail, it opens your Gmail. Right. You might want that bounce rate because you're trying yeah. to get them to email you, but that yeah. goes off of the page. So Yeah. Knowing knowing your funnel <clears throat> is is huge. And this kind of points to if if you're getting a vibe here, SEO does not live in a void mm -hmm. of the rest of your business process. So if a marketer comes to you and says, I can get your SEO going. And you said, that's funny. How do you know what the psychographic profile of my clients are? What's my industry? Mm -hmm. And do you know what my, the next step in my funnel is? Do you know what my sales process is like? Do you know our value proposition? How can someone just step in and say, I can fix your SEO? Now, mechanically, that is probably an accurate statement. Hey, if you wanted me to get you to rank for fluffy nerf herders <laughs> we could <laughs> we could we could, we, could get you, <laughs> we could get you to rank for fluffy nerf herders but are we contributing with a net gain yeah to your revenue in any measurable logical way and so an example of this is i met with adam yesterday did i tell you about this was this yesterday i think it was yeah a little bit adam is the owner of spark billet and for those who don't know, Spark Billing Services, check them out if you need custom building or club building or medical building solutions. Spark Billing is blowing up right now. And they got a huge team and we met to talk about content. And they said, hey, how should we produce content? And I was like, well, that's a tactical question. Record video, transcribe it, turn it into a blog post, and then you know, filter it out here or do it the other way, right? short form content like tweets and video reels and just see what resonates with people then take that and turn that into long form content mm -hmm. and then distribute that to your like it could go either way and it's like well how do you make that decision what's the context and what's the goal and it's the same with seo we're mm -hmm. talking about that was talking about content and ranking but content and ranking in seo we have to know the goal we have to know your sales process and how we're contributing and if we're not asking those questions, now you'll probably pay less, 
but you'll pay less to get not a lot. And then you'll pay them and then you'll pay us or someone like us who's asking these questions. And now you're just paying even yeah. more than paying more. Yeah, if you're focused on marketing Go ahead. And, and they're if a marketer is not asking you your goal, they're what yeah. They're trapped. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, and SC and SEO search engine marketers, SEM people, or people calling you selling these SEO services, they're quite often selling it as if they exist in a bubble. Oh, an interesting question, Jared, my man. If you guys don't know more than blockchain, the podcast, please look up more than blockchain. Jared is a close friend that we've never smelled each other or men public or met in person. <laughs> We I like I think about this. He's such a good friend at this point. Like he's a friend. Like we'll call and talk after this call. We're jumping right on a call to talk to Jared. But like I feel like I know my friends by smell, and I don't. Jared, oh, oh that's interesting. We've never met each other in real life. But um, he he, as I am. If those who don't know, we have a, I, we have another show called Not Crypto Bros. Jared himself has a fantastic podcast called More Than Blockchain. Will SEO play a role, uh, in Web three? And the answer is, I believe unequivocally, yes. Uh, thanks for the shout out, uh, more than blockchain. You got it, Jared. Um, so this is an interesting question and it's a nuanced question and we're kind of at the end of our hour. So I don't mind taking this question. It's not tactical or strategic, but I would say um, if you're a business owner and you're dabble in Web3, you question a lot of things. Um, Web3 disrupts a lot. And... SEO might be disrupted a bit by Web3. SEO might be disrupted a bit by Web3 from this regard, I believe. In a Web3 world, and most of you might not even know what Web3 is, and we don't want to use the word crypto because it's not crypto even. Web3 is the next iteration of the web. The metaverse, mm -hmm. right? If we can think about the metaverse, um, there's lots of ways that search and discovery and, and seo folks is search engine optimization what jared's getting at i think well one of the things he's scratching at is when you're in the metaverse with an oculus goggle and you're curious about a topic but you're used to dealing in 3d like a video game are you going to use a search bar and type that i contend yes because it's what we know what will be other search possibilities? Well, we might click an icon that floats with us, like Clippy. Remember Clippy, the clip, yes. the paper? Clip. The clip art guy. <laughs> we might click Clippy. Yeah. And, and we might just ask a question, but we're still having a semantic search. Or we might go to Ready Player One Hub and, and rub shoulders with folks and ask real other avatars mm. questions. And they might go, well, I was on this one hub over here. Well, that's just word of mouth referral. So the metaverse is one thing, but the other is the decentralized web. So if people aren't in an Oculus and they're not in the metaverse and they're still browsing the web, but it's the architecture is a web three decentralized web. Because the web, <laughs> Clippy, the real OG of the internet, let me tell you something. This dude drove me batshit crazy as a kid. <laughs> But I now have huge affection. In fact, Tristan, if you're still watching, this is our next, next T-shirt. Um, so, Amber, you weren't on our other show, but me and Jared had a, a, a budding relationship with Tristan who posted here about doing a series of T-shirts that were just like completely ironic and throwback in yes. Bizarro. And Clippy would make for like a fine, like, look, uh, lacrosse, lacrosse? What's that? I don't even know the brand, the brand lacrosse? name. Lacrosse? Lacoste, thank you. <laughs> Lacrosse. So I still think that in a Web3 world, the main factor, a lot will change in a Web3 world, but I think most of us won't notice that change. People like me, people like Jared will notice that change. People in the metaverse will notice change. If you're in the metaverse, search will still be relevant. Dominant, I don't know, but relevant, yes. And then in a uh, and then a normal search, even though the internet itself becomes decentralized. And Amber, you might not know this, but in Web three world, we also believe that people will move into corners of the internet. 
mm-hmm. they'll instead of being this free for all and what we call the internet, they're going to start to get more, more and more tribal. And they're already pretty tribal in social media networks and whatnot, but it's sure. going to get even more tribal. At least this is my prediction. This is what I'm calling. I could be on crack, but Jarrett, thank you so much for this phenomenal SEO question. And th- yeah. like it's futurism, right? The thing about futurism is it affects the innovators and the early adopters. But by the time the mid or late adopters happen, they don't even notice the change anymore. They say things like, see, where did that go? And what happened was it got infused in the technological architecture for them to take in the form of Scooby Snacks. They don't even know it changed. Yeah. But the rest of us participated. In that chance, it's a great, great question. Amber, you got a jet out of here, yes? Yep. Okay, thanks for, thanks for stopping by. I appreciate you. Tristan, boom. <laughs> great calling the social wedge. <laughs> so for, the, for those who don't know, uh, we got into a heated debate yesterday, and Tristan knows. This, is a, this show is about SEO. Okay, let me be very clear. Today's show is about SEO, but Tristan has a throwback, almost like a running gag, to go back and watch Not Crypto Bros from yesterday. We got into a heated argument about uh, our partner, Jay, who called a trading wedge, which is a trading technical trading term that occurred, and he's just throwing this back, that I am calling for there to be a social wedge. Jared jumps in with an SEO question. In the down market, should brands focus on SEO or social media if they had to choose one? This is a phenomenal question. If you are a small business owner watching this now or watching this later, if it were me in a down market, I am assuming in this down market, you have shrunk your budget. I have Maslow's hierarchy of needs of how to spend your internet budget. I don't touch on all of marketing because I would not say that we are a... uh, highly skilled at the broader market of marketing, broader industry of marketing. But as it comes to the internet, if I had to narrow my budget down, my Maslow's hierarchy of needs of like baseline of what I would do, I would do social media all day long, free content. Now, when we talk about SEO, all we're talking about is intentional and strategic content. So if you focus on social media, you should be asking yourself SEO questions anyway. If I'm asking myself an SEO, a, a social media question, what content should I produce today? For example, in Jarrett's post, um, <laughs> Paul Beardmore, Abraham Maslow made an internet marketing guide. We wish, no, I made the Spark internet marketing hierarchy of need. <laughs> Paul, thanks for, thanks for asking. But if I had a limited budget, I would focus on social media, but that doesn't mean you're not doing SEO strategy. SEO strategy is simply a matter of making use of tools that, believe it or not, are all free. I just tactically know how to put them together because of experience. Um, and so knowing what content, and in the example I was going to give of Jarrett, uh, of Jarrett's brand here, more than blockchain, Jarrett knows that his podcast will touch mostly on crypto, mostly on blockchain, mostly on Bitcoin, but it might also touch on humanitarian issues because I know Jarrett and I know that there's probably, say, for example, a first world need or a second world need or a third world need or whatever the appropriate term is for how, say, for example, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala is dealing with Bitcoin right now. So though he might create a social media piece about this, a podcast or a blog or an Instagram post. He should still be looking up what people are searching. When they type in, for example, Guatemala Bitcoin, they might be typing in the right term. Maybe they should be searching El Salvador. It was El Salvador. I don't recall, but Jarrett knows off the top of his head. But let's say it was actually El Salvador Bitcoin. Well, he should write a blog post that actually references, will El Salvador have Bitcoin or will Guatemala have Bitcoin? So even though he makes a single social media post, he is still playing the SEO game because you're watching what people are searching for. All that SEO is, if I could simplify, Tristan had a phenomenal example from earlier in the show, go back and watch it, a definition of SEO. But if we could simplify SEO, 
this is all we're saying. Do the homework of what people are searching for. Don't assume. Uh, <laughs> uh, here we go. So he's saying it's El Salvador, not Guatemala yet. Thank you for correcting me. So yeah, so if someone was searching for El Salvador Bitcoin, but they weren't entirely sure there's a thing called negative SEO. That is, is when someone might write the opposite in their search by mistake, or maybe make a mistake in spelling. Like instead of saying El Salvador, they say La Salvador because they don't know Spanish. And in that case, that would be considered a negative keyword or a negative keyword phrase or negative SEO. All that SEO is, is more tactically, more nuanced, figuring out what to write, what to po post and what to record it. So this is a phenomenal question in a down market and we are approaching an extreme down market. We've been through the pandemic and we thought the pandemic was extreme. The pandemic felt extreme, but it was, it was extreme for restaurants, of course, and we were all homebound. But there was still a lot of cash in the market. And there was still a lot of people buying from new industries like DoorDash and a lot of these sort of two-year door services that blew up during that time. We are going into a genuine recession. And in that genuine global, and I believe this will be largely a global recession, and we already are in it, but I think it's going to deepen. And what Jared's getting at is really important for small business owners. You should be looking at tightening your budget. You should be looking at getting strategic. The one thing I would never cut is marketing. I might tighten my marketing budget. I might get focused, but it would be the last thing to go, go. Because you're going to be around long after. You're going to survive this. You're going to survive other recessions. It's going, to get, it's going to get better. It's going to get worse. I'm not pessimistic. It's just, to me, a matter of fact that these cycles are happening. So how can you prepare, at least when it comes to your internet? Be comfortable posting consistently. And SEO, really, as I, I started giving you the, the tips on SEO. Here, let's see if I can share my screen real quick again and show this to you. <clears throat> if you want, uh, if you want access to this, just let me know, go to our website. I think it's just SEO checklist. If you just Google actually spark sites, SEO checklist, this should come up and you could download it. Um, but we actually have the basics and what you'll notice from this is, it, uh, Jared, this answers your question actually, because it is just social media and posting, but it's just following a checklist of what's in that content making sure it's a complete piece of content right there. No, uh, section five, these are principles that should be applied uniquely to each and every post or web page. So you're already going to be creating content. Should you be spending money on a content agency? Probably not. You should be doubling down on your own brand. You should be doubling down on your own message, but you should be tactical with it. And in being tactical with it, let me get back over here. And in being tactical with it, you'll be doing both. Great question. I really, really appreciate this. And lol, boom, here we go. Tristan Peter, the social wedge sounds like a Web3 platform for DJs. <laughs> We're not going to go down this rabbit trail so late in the game. Listen, thank you for stopping by. We're at the top of the hour. I won't take up any more of your afternoon. This has been Spark Sites. Ask me anything office hours. As you can tell, I will answer anything. When Amber's here, she and I will answer anything. But a lot of you asked about SEO last week or two weeks ago. We wanted to make sure we made ourselves available. We wanted to make sure we put together a tool for you. Check out sparkmysite.com forward slash, I think it's SEO checklist. You can get access to this checklist yourself, download it, make use of it. And some of you have been asking for the course, so we might also do that. But ask any questions you need. Let us know how we can serve you. But no matter what you do today, remember why we are here. Remember why you're here. Remember the mission, igniting lives of explosive significance, starting with your own. Have a killer day.